Hey gang, and welcome back. So just to kind of reiterate where we left off, I wanted to start over again with alternative generations. So remember that there are two different life stages. There's the gametophyte and the sporophyte. Gametophyte produces gametes. Sporophytes produce spores. And in different uh, types of plants, in the vascular versus the non-vascular, uh, the gametophyte can be dominant in one and the sporophyte can be dominant in the other. So here we have an example of a non-vascular plant this is the same we did earlier. This is the carpet moss, just drawn a little differently. And here you have the, the dominant gametophyte. It's here all the time. And the gametophyte produces gametes, egg and sperm. Those egg and sperm were fused together to form on top of the gametophyte. It'll grow a sporophyte. Um, usually it starts off green, but as it uh, dries out a little bit, it actually uh, hardens and turns brown. And that, this little uh, shell will crack open, this little capsule will crack open. And out comes spores, because the sporophyte produces spores. Those spores go back in the gametophyte. And this is kind of the, 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 the dominant gametophyte, um, non-dominant sporophyte that we see in our non-vascular plants. But in vascular plants, it's a little different. Well, actually, it's totally opposite, not just a little different. Uh, in in uh, the alternation generation of vascular plants, the sporophyte is dominant, and it's pretty big. All right, so that's going to produce spores. Those spores grow into the gametophyte, which is really, really tiny. And here's the, this is a prothallus, the gametophyte of a fern. It produces gametes. Those gametes fuse together to uh, form the, uh, you know, a baby fern, a, a baby sporophyte, which will grow up into the adult fern, produce spores. Spores grow into gametophyte, produces gametes, so forth and so on, around and around and around. Um, but that's alternation of generations. So nice, we had to go through it twice, right? All right, so let's move on just a little bit. So let's talk about plants getting onto land. Um, we know that life evolved in the ocean where there's tons of water, but if you're gonna get up on, on land, you're gonna face some problems you're not gonna have in, in the ocean. And the first thing is gonna be making sure that you can keep water inside your body. If you're floating around in water, you don't have to worry about that. But when you're on land, it dries out. You gotta make sure your cells have water. So they evolved uh, a cuticle, which is a waxy coating that keeps water from escaping. If you go to the grocery store, pick up an apple, and uh, just rub your finger on it, or rub your fingernail on it, and you'll see that you're scratch, end up scratching off a, a waxy coating. That's the cuticle. The other thing is once they close themselves up to get water, to keep water in, they also realize, hey, we can't breathe. They have to have oxygen in order to do cell respiration. They've got to get CO2 in order to do um, uh, photosynthesis. So we had to create holes in those. And so those holes are uh, holes in the leaves and then that waxy coating, and those holes are called stomas. They're not open all the time in most plants, and different plants do it differently. Uh, some stay open at night and close during the day. Some are open in the day and close at night. It just depends on what type of plant you are. But it's all about gas exchange, and the stoma is the way that that happens. Um, and the other thing is the tubes that are going to be used to push water around the body. Um, and, and sugar and other things. Um, but it's xylem and phloem. The way I remember it is phloem and food has the same sound. So phloem carries their food. And what is the food for plants? What's well, the same as the food is every, for everything else? It's glucose, C6H12O6. All right. And then xylem is for water. Now think about this. Where's the water around a plant? Is it hanging up by the leaves or is the water in the ground down by the roots? Obviously it's the ground down by the roots. So which direction is, is xylem going to go? It's going to go from the roots up to the leaves, not the other way around. And also, uh, phloem, which way is it going to go? Well, the food is not made in the roots underground, right? Because it has to be where photosynthesis is occurring, because that's where sugar is made. That's going to be in the leaves up in the top. But it's going to get stored and pumped down to the roots that are underground. So phloem runs from the leaves down to the roots. So it's good to remember which direction they go. Um, because the, a plant always uses a lot more water uh, uh, than it's going to use for, um, uh, than it's going to make in sugar, um, it just needs a lot more water because you're going to lose a lot of water through transpiration. Uh, a lot of the water is used for absorbing sunlight and just keeping cell metabolism going, keeping you know, your hydration balance, uh, you know, just what you need. You need a lot more water than you're going to make in food. So if you actually look at the vascular bundles inside of a stem of a plant, uh, the larger tubes, these are going to be the xylem, pretty easy to see. And then the smaller tubes, these are going to be the phloem. 
for the food. So xylem water flow in food. It's covered in wax. It's the cuticle. It's got holes in it so it can breathe, and that is the stoma. All right, so there are two basic types of plants. We can hit on this earlier. Um, first, you have the non-vascular plants. Those are called bryophytes. There are three groups of bryophytes. There's the mosses, the liverworts, and the hornworts. Um, so here's our mosses, there's our liverworts, and there's our hornworts. Um, the big thing about these bryophytes is they are non-vascular. They do not have tissue for getting water up or sugar down. So how do they do that? If they're going to grow up in any height, they still have to get water from down low up to, up to tall. And if they, even if they stay under eight, under eight inches, how is it that they're getting water from the bottom to the top? For us, that's not that far. For, but for a molecule of water, that's, that's an infinitive you know, d distance. How are they going to move water from down below to the top without the use, use of tubes? Well, have you ever taken a paper towel and just dipped like the tip of the paper towel in water? Does the water stay just where you dipped it in the paper towel, or does it soak up into the paper towel some? Well, it soaks up, right? That's the great thing about paper towels. If they didn't do that, that'd be a crappy paper towel. Um, there's a process in there called capillary action, and it's based off the idea that water at a molecular level is sticky. Remember, water is a polar molecule. It's like, they're like little magnets. They'll stick to and they'll climb up stuff, and they and the um, their force of sticking and pulling is is generally more than they weigh. So they can pull themselves up. They can go a certain height, right about eight inches or so, maybe a little bit taller. Um, and after they get that about that height up, um, that uh, the weight of the water is more now. The weight of that column of water is now more than the weight uh, than the uh, than the hydrogen bond it can hold, so it doesn't go up any higher. And that's called capillary action, and that's how non-vascular plants get water up. That's why they're kind of reduced to smaller sizes. So mosses, liverworts, hornworts, all these things are actually pretty small. Um, and that's simply because they just don't use tubes. But hey, it still works. They're, they still live. They're able to go and reproduce and do stuff. And the whole point of life is to keep life going, and they're doing that. So good deal. All right, so let's look at the mosses. Um, the mosses in general, uh, we see these all the time. I call this carpet moss. Uh, here's carpet moss with some nice young green um, um, uh, spore uh, fights on top. Because, again, this is the gametophyte, the dominant generation. Then it'll start producing spores, which grows into the spore fights and so forth. But this is not the dominant life stage. This is the dominant life stage. So but these are your typical mosses. And uh, there's another type of moss that we have around here, and it's called Spanish moss. Uh, but the thing about Spanish moss is eh, it is actually not a true moss at all. It's actually a flowering plant. It's closely related to the pineapple. Its, it's scientific name is Tilicensia usnicioides, and have fun saying that. I know you won't, um, but that's, that's what that is called. We call it Spanish moss, so that's kind of an idea of what we think kind of mosses are, but it's not actually a moss. It's actually a flowering plant. Just the flowers are very, very tiny. They use beetles and flies to uh, uh, pollinate, but it's actually not a type of moss at all. Spanish moss is not a moss, sorry, a veto in that. So it does look at the liverworts. So liverworts are another type of plant. There's different types all over the place, just kind of like a broad grouping. And um, these liverworts, uh, first of all, they're called liverworts because they're lobed, and so is the liver inside of mammals. And so it looks like little livers, so they call it liverworts because it's liver and it's got little bumps on it like warts. Um, and this is the gametophyte, so that makes these things the sporophyte. Good deal. Um, if you were having problems with your liver, guess what they ground up and gave to you for medicine? Liverworts, because the thought was, hey, this kind of looks like a liver. Maybe it'll help you with the liver. And if you don't know anything else, that's at least a shot in the right direction. Turns out there's not really anything in this liverwort that actually helps you with your liver, though I think they still sell this stuff. Uh, I think you can go to Walmart right now and pick up a thing of crushed up liverwort. Um, but again, it's got that FDA stamp on it saying, hey, this doesn't actually do anything. So not been approved by the, by the F, uh, FDA, Food and Drug Administration for America, which means it does not do what it says it's going to do. But um, still a lot of studies going into different types of plants, but I don't think we're doing much with liverwort at the time. It does not help your liver. So hornwort. So with hornwort, um, the same thing is kind of like liverwort, but these actually have a, a prostrate piece that, uh, that stands up. So here's the uh, gametophytes down here on the bottom. And here is the sporophyte. And in this tip where it dries out, these actually are little capsules. They'll have spores inside of them. Here are some that are growing that are still green. You can see the gametophytes on the bottom, the sporophytes that are sticking up. Um, 
and and that's it. It's a great little plant. There's all different types of these growing all over the around the world, but it's it's definitely a type of uh, non-vascular plant. So like with the liverworts, they they give it to you if you had problems with your liver. Guess what? Guess what they uh, they uh, uh, how do I put this delicately? Um, guess what had to be wrong with you for people to crush up and give you hornwort? No, your horns weren't you know not growing because you don't have horns. Um, but gentlemen, if you had erectile dysfunction. Um, the thought was, hey, there's something in this plant that makes it stand up. Maybe if we crush this up and give it to you, you'll gain that ability back. Um, I know it's funny, but that's what it was used for. Um, and uh, it doesn't do anything, you know? So don't take that. Take something else. Moving on. 